Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to learn about try and cache logic in Power Automate. And this session is also a continuation session from the earlier session where we are creating the Excel uploader tool. So let's jump into the Power Automate portal where we will implement the try and catch logic. So guys, I am inside the Power Automate portal and I am at the same place where I have left. So over here, we are going to create the try catch logic inside Power Automate. So the first thing I would like to tell you that Power Automate doesn't offer a direct mechanism to use the try catch block. So that means we don't have any kind of a connectors or an action that is called as try and catch block where you can put your code and it will behave out of the box. So to implement the try catch block, we have to design logically. So how we will implement it? Let's look into that. So the first step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new step over here. So I'm going to use a scope control over here. So I will select and within that I'm going to add an action. But prior to that, I'm going to rename it and I will call it as try. You can call it as success also. If your application logic executed successfully, whatever the action which you want to take after successfully executing the logic, you can do it over here. The next block I am going to create is the catch block. So whenever any error happens in that scenario, you have to execute that block. So for that reason, I am going to add a parallel branch over here. And within this parallel branch, I am going to create another scope control over here and I will call it as catch. This is going to be my catch block. So now we have added two scope control over here. Now we will write the logic over here. But prior to that, make sure that in case of failure, in that scenario only, this catch block will execute. So how we will do that? Let's look into that. To do that, I need to come to the context menu over here. And over here, I need to configure run after. And instead of is successful, it should run when anything fail. Where anything fail? When application logic, which is over here, if this block of code gets failed, then only this will run. So I will select this one. I will do done over here. You can select has timed out also for our scenario. I am just catching the failed thing. So I will click done over here. So now in case of success, this block will execute. In case of failure, this block will execute. Now next what we want to do inside the success case that is try case. So I want to post a notification with a success message to the teams whoever is uploading the Excel file so that he gets notified that whatever action he has taken or whatever the Excel file he has uploaded, the success message, he will get it. And in case of failure, he will get the failure message in the Teams chat. So how we will do that? Let's look into that. So over here, I will come and I will add an action over here. I will write a term post and over here, you will see that I have a Microsoft Teams connector. And within this Teams connector, we have many actions. Within this action, I have a something called post message in chat or channel. I will select this action and over here, I want to post it as Flowbot. And next, we need to specify post in and over here, I need to select chat with Flowbot. And then we need to specify the recipient. So who is going to be the recipient over here? We need to specify the created by field. So over here, we need to specify the created by whoever has uploaded the Excel file. He will get the notification. So over here, you will see that we are not getting the dynamic value. So, but there is a value available. So how we will extract that value? We have to write this expression. So Power Automate is all about writing the correct expression. So over here, in the application logic over here, we are having get data from uploaded Excel. So this is the action we are having and it is returning many of the metadata along with the data which it is bringing from the SharePoint using this REST API. And in that data, we are having the created by field. So how I am pretty much sure that yes, there is a created by field exist. I will show you right now. Let me open the same flow and the run history which we have executed earlier. So let me open the same flow with the run history. So guys, I am inside the run history of the Excel uploader tool which we have ran earlier and I will go inside the application logic over here and this is the and this is the step where we are getting the created by information. Just click on this and just go to the body part of it. You will see that there is something called created by and we want the email of the 
created by so see how the data is placed within the created by we are having this is a json data you will see that this curly braces and within this data we are having a user data and within that user data we are having email and i want to extract this email from this created by field so how we will do that let's look into that this is the trick we have to follow whenever we are working with json inside power automate so how we will write the expression that is what i am going to show you now so i will come over here go to the recipient and over here within the expression i will write outputs and outputs of this get data from uploaded excel i will come here and i have written this function name and I will go to the dynamic content and over here I will select this body. Now you will see that it has already given us the thing which we are expecting. So uh, what I will do, I will delete this output and go to the end. And over here we want created by. So for the created by, I put a question mark. If this key is available, then give me the created by. So I will write created by just verify that whatever the spelling we have written over here which is correct or not and you will see that it is correct spelling then we are having user then we are having email and all are a small case so let's do so i will come back put a question mark again and then over here i will specify user within the user i am having another key that is email and that is what i wanted because this is expecting the email address over here so i will put email so now we got the email of the person who has uploaded the excel now once it is being done i will display the message success excel data uploaded successfully this is the message i want to give bold increase the size better we can keep 18 now what i will do i will copy the same but this time i am going to do it for the catch block that is for the failure scenario so over here add action my clipboard post message in a chat or channel now i will come back over here and this time and instead of success i will tell that failed data upload excel data upload unsuccessful so we are done with the catch block so now we are done with the implementation of the try catch block now next what we will do we will test it so first we will do with the success case and we will look into what is the message it is giving us inside my chat teams chat so let's run it but prior to that make sure that you are saving it so i have saved it now now let's jump into the document library and push the excel file to test it but prior to that i will do the cleanup of the data which is already existing to the sharepoint list so that we can test it end to end so i will come here select all the record and delete now let's go back to the document library over here i will upload another file over here i will come files and this time I am going to use data 6 upload it so it is start uploading the moment it gets uploaded the flow will gets triggered so we have to wait for some time and along with that I have opened my teams let me show you so guys this is my teams and over here once everything executed successfully I will get the message from the power automate bot so let's wait for it let's verify the run history whether it has started execution or not so I will come here click on three dots that is context menu run history and right now it is not started so let's wait for it so now over here you will see that it started running click on it and let's go inside and over here it has successfully executed and over here we got the notification as well so let's look into that now over here you will see that from the power automate bot we got the message success excel data uploaded successfully so this is about try block so now let's rerun the program again and this time we will intentionally make it fail so how we will do that let's look into that so guys before executing the failure case i would like to tell you that if you rerun the program again with the same file which we have used then it will throw the error at create table step that is because same table name you can't specify and within our flow we are not specifying any name so it is assigning a default name that is called table one and if you execute the same program then what will happen it will throw an error called table not overlap for our scenario so i am going to execute it because i know that it is going to fail if i will rerun the program in that step and that will help us to design our failure test case so over here i will come 
click on edit so over here you will see that we are having a link called test I will click on it and this time I will select automatically and then I will select automatically and over here I will use with a recent use trigger and which trigger I want to use this one which have ran five minutes earlier so it is going to use the same artifact which we have uploaded and perform the same steps so let's do it and click on test and this time it failed because of the reason which I have mentioned and over here you will see that it failed what it told a table cannot overlap another table that is because of the same reason because it tried to create a table with the same name which is already existing inside the power automate memory and this time you will see that it has executed the catch block over here let's go to the team chat and there you will find the same message with the field statement so let's jump into the teams and over here you will see that it has given us the field statement so this is the way you can handle the try catch logic inside power automate this is one of the way by which you can handle all the scenario wherever you are having success you can send an email you can provide the reports about each of the data which you have uploaded you can also specify the catch block if you are having any error that also you can send through the email instead of this teams chat so guys this is what I wanted to demonstrate you in this session so let's wrap the session so guys in this session we have learned that how to implement try and catch logic now in the next session I am going to show you how to build the run history URL and then after this session I will explain how to implement the logging mechanism inside the power automate because our power automate run history available only for 28 days but after that if you require that run history for audit purpose it is not available so in that scenario you have to create some custom mechanism to log your errors for your future usage but prior to that I will show you how to build the run history URL so on this note I am stopping over here see you in the next session till then bye bye take care